Hello and welcome back to the Real Real Estate Rundown. My name is Jessica Trezuto, realtor here in the Antelope Valley, also the high desert of Southern California, and thank you for listening. Um, today we are working on episode five. Um, and up until now, we focused on buying a home and we're going to switch gears today and focus on selling a home. And depending on your timeline, your, your steps may be different. They may be sped up. They might, you know, you might be able to take it at your own pace. So just kind of having all of the information and all of the facts ahead of time, I always find it to be very helpful in making decisions. So you want to sell your home. That's step one is deciding. Um, are you are you moving? Do you want to um, move up? Do you want to sell and downsize? Do you want to sell and move to a different location? Um, there are many motivations for selling. So figure out and really dial into the reasoning behind your sale because that, that's going to help your end goal. Um, and also when you're speaking to your realtor there, they will be able to assist you in your goal, kind of both knowing what the bottom line is and what is most important to you as the client. So what is step one? You have decided that you want to sell your house and what do you do first? Well, let me tell you, step one is find a realtor, someone you trust, um, there is a debate going on in amongst us about, well, why do I need a real estate agent? Why can't I just sell it by myself? And um, I found a, a statistic to share with you um, just to show you the benefits of using a realtor and all of our connections. And you, I kind of view my job description as as a project manager. I make sure that all of the hoops that need to be jumped through get jumped. And another part of my job is also to make sure that it's done right, that it's recorded accurately with the counties and the states and the state so that nothing comes back on you. Um, I would be extremely disappointed if I sold my home by myself for sale by owner and I didn't do it correctly and it comes back to bite me later on. Um, like you owe money or it's not really in your name. There, there are just way too many factors that you, you want a real estate agent in your corner during this time. Um, the statistic I wanted to share with you that I found on the um, National, Associ National Association of Realtors.com. Um, and basically what the average says is last year, um, a client who, or a home sold by an agent averaged about 249,000. In contrast, the average FISBO for sale by owner home went for 190,000. That's almost a $60,000 difference. Now I'm not saying every time that these are the averages when you use a real estate agent that were able to list it on the MLS, on the multiple listing service, so other agents can see it. And there are instructions for how to show the home. I just think that you get more exposure when you use a realtor. Um, and potentially you're going to find the right home buyer and make it a win-win situation and everyone is happy. And once you have your realtor, step two would be to figure out what price to sell your home at. This number is determined and decided on by the seller and your realtor will guide you in this process. I would run a CMA and a CMA stands for Comparative Market Analysis. And basically I'm gonna do a search. So I take the parameters of your current home the size, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, what year it was built in. A, a lot of these de de determining factors and I put it into a search of your neighborhood and I see what the market is doing with, with homes similar to your size. So I look at 
what has sold in the past three to six months. I look at what's pending. So what has been on the market and has offers. Um, I also look at what has not gotten offers and maybe try to determine why um, in order to help my client. Because if you have a home priced, let's say at 300,000 and it's been on the market for 100 days, what is your motivation? Um, there's a reason that it's been on the market for 100 days if there's been you know, no offers. Um, and so during this time, you're, you're working with a realtor who can give you advice. Um, but at the end of the day, this is your house. This is your big piece of property that at the, at the end of the day, you decide um, if you want to sell or not. And if you want, if you are okay with waiting 100 days, um, and you're continuing to pay your mortgage and you're not needing to move quickly and that's okay. Um, if your motivation is to list it this month and sell it this month so that you don't have to pay another mortgage and that you really want to get to your new location. And then maybe, maybe you're looking at reducing the price. Um, And it's not saying that your house is not worth what you think it's worth. It's just what the market is telling us. Um, Because if if your home is priced at 300,000 and pretend I am a home buyer, I'm going to look at all the homes on the market available for 300,000. And if I find other homes that I'd rather put offers in and buy, as the buyer, I'm going to do that. And so just pay attention to the activity that your home is getting. Um, And usually after a couple weeks, if there is no activity, you do want to bring the price down or or maybe you don't want to sell at that point. So take it off the market and and reevaluate your motivation for selling. Um, The the market is, is there for a reason. And it's just like, Anything else we buy and sell and there's demand and supply and all of these things matter in a transaction. And if there's a home out there for 300000 that's a little bit more desirable, usually the buyer will go for that one. And it's just, it's just as if you were in a store looking at three different clocks. And if all three of the, the wall clocks that you want are $100, you're going to now start to compare these three clocks. Well, if they're all the same price, let me look at the value. And maybe one of the wall clocks is fancy and makes a special jingle that you like and has a bird that pops out, you know, every hour. And you're like, that's so cool. If I spend $100 on the other wall clock, I don't get that. So it's kind of like from the buyer's perspective, they want to get the most for their money. So step one is looking at the other homes on the market and kind of stepping back and putting yourself in the buyer's shoes and saying, okay, if I were a buyer and I'm looking at my house or these other two houses, what if mine was priced $2,000 less? And so now you're listing your home at $298,000. And you're still having buyers come in that can afford three hundred thousand, but they wanna, but they wanna see why this one is two thousand dollars less. And if they come in and they are wowed by the value it gives, oh no doubt, the the two hundred and ninety eight thousand dollar home they're putting the offer in. So be strategic and look at what the market is doing right at this very moment, and see how you can get your home in there in a desirable position. And next, I want to talk about um, a little tip that um, I've encountered by working in this industry. And these are for home for home sellers, I think, who have lived there 10 plus years. And the reason I give this advice is because it might give you a little inside tip into what's coming. So I recommend home sellers getting their own inspections. Now, normally this is this is the buyer's responsibility, and it is, to come in and do their due diligence and have an inspection done. However, as the seller, 
if you have an inspection done prior to being, you know, putting it on the market, you have an advantage of knowing what the buyer will discover during this time. And there are some things that you can take care of as the seller that won't hinder your process. And you don't want to give the buyer any kind of ammo to lower the price. And if it's something, if it's a quick fix that maybe you could do on your end as the seller prior to listing and get it handled, you can get your value. You know, you can get your money for your home back. And that's kind of what, now I'm not saying that, that to go and do all these upgrades, because normally when, when sellers try to upgrade their house, they expect, if not equal or more money back on the end from the sale. And that doesn't happen. You, It's rare or to be like, oh, I put in $50,000. Now you should just take the price and add 50,000. And that's how much we should sell it for. So Keep in mind the market, the other homes on the market will help determine your price. So I'm thinking more of little fixes that you know if someone were going to buy this house, they'd want fixed. Again, you don't have to do this. Um, This is for someone who maybe wants to, so they don't have any unexpected um, things pop up later on. Because at that point, when, the, when you have a buyer, an accepted offer, and you're in escrow, you're kind of wanting to get, to get it over with and have the sale be done. So that's just one little tip that I suggest. Okay, so now you're at the point where you are ready. You're ready to sell. Um, and I would prepare your home. Um, so as the seller, you really want to make your home seem like it's um, like that someone lives there, that it's anonymous. For example, um, you don't want them to walk in and and say, oh, this is, this is Sally's house Um, because you want the buyer to walk in and envision themselves in this home. So what, what about your home that do you love, you know, that you want to highlight and Um, Another suggestion I have is to declutter. So if you know far in advance that you want to sell your home, keep that in mind. Start going through your stuff. Maybe if you're going to box it up to move, start that process now. Um, Maybe have an area where you're you're putting your boxes because that's normal. People are going to expect a room full of boxes. If not, you know, a home that's people live in. So go through your things. Do you want to, um, let's see, donate or, um, repurpose or gift, um, or take, you know, so you're going through your things and you really only want left out staged items. So you might leave the coffee table and your couch and, maybe a dining room table and in the kitchen I'm talking cleared out. So nothing on the countertops, maybe everything's in your, in your cabinets and you just want to show off and highlight your home. Um, let's see the bedrooms. You may only have a bed in there with side tables and a lamp, you know, just like very, almost maybe think, think of it like a hotel kind of, you know, there's nothing personal about it. Um, they they tend to be nice, but you don't have to go out and buy anything for this. I recommend using the seller's furniture to stage the home. Um, but every situation is different. If you want to clear it out, let's say you want to move because you, you can, and your situation allows you to take everything out. Um, and then maybe we stage it minimally, or maybe it's empty. You want the home, the new home buyer to walk in and be able to envision their family there. Um, Coffee table or no coffee table, I think is still better than a a home maybe that someone lives in. Um, 
again, these are this is my opinion. And I've also heard of, which is becoming more common and common, are getting these pods. You know, the big trailer that you can put in your driveway that you fill up with um, with your belongings because then you're going to have them ship the container to your new home. So any way, any way that you research and, and decide to do it, it's up to you, right? It's, it's your home and I'm just here to help guide you in the process. And also you want to think about um, cleaning, cleaning your carpets, cleaning your walls, um, even like the smudge marks around the door that maybe no one ever notices or um, and maybe you have an animal who has, you know, nose marks on the door. You can, you know, get a wet wipe or something and walk around and wipe those walls down. Um, just really make your place shine. Um, and those of you wanting to spend money during this time, which you don't have to, um, but you can hire a cleaning service to come in before pictures are taken. Um, because you want your home to show off its best light. These cleaners that you hire, they, they get expensive. I, I was researching cleaning uh, companies, I mean, really to come in and deep clean, and it is not cheap, a couple hundred bucks. But, I mean, they came in and they shined everything, the, you know, the baseboards on the floor. Even my trash can, which was stainless steel, they shined it. So it's just if you want to. Um, And if you have the time or maybe you spend the weekend cleaning, you know, you have your family come in or maybe you or you and your friends and you're like, okay, we're going to deep clean this whole house um, because it's going to go on the market next week. And I want it to shine, shine, shine. And I am focusing a lot on the inside of the house, but everything I'm talking about also refers to the outside of your home and appearance is everything. And I recently heard when you're, when you're going to list your home, it's, it's almost like a beauty contest. And as much as we like to say, you know, don't worry about how it looks. When you're buying and selling a home, your first impression as a buyer, it, it's very important. I mean, do you, when you, when you parked, did you get excited? Were you looking at the the nicely um, mowed lawn um, or maybe like all of the leaves were swept up so it just looks clean from the outside. Curb appeal um, is a real thing because even even from just parking, you want the buyer to park and envision them parking here daily for years. So have that first impression even from... The front yard just be amazing. Okay, so now your home is on the market and you're sitting on your couch and you're waiting for everyone to come knock on your door and let me see your house and oh, I I can't wait to move in. So during this time, um, I, I ask that you be flexible with your real estate agent and some people may not want to have showings and that's okay. As your real estate agent, I would recommend that you give access to the potential buyers that want to see your home. And the potential buyers that want to see your home that also have a real estate agent, and let's say they're calling me because they want to see your home, and I want to say yes, you know, like, So just be flexible and, you know, if it's five o'clock or six o'clock on a Wednesday and you're tired and you just want to go home, well, if somebody wants to view the house, just kind of just have that in mind and and say, okay, if somebody wants to see the house, I can leave for 30 minutes to 45 minutes, you know, go get a bite to eat or go, you know, get some things at the store and let them have that time. Um, because you're going to want other agents to show your home. Um, you're going to want to have an open house and if it's done right, you won't have to do this very long. Give access, you know, when people want to see it and 
the offers will start rolling in. If, if it's priced right um, and somebody really wants it, there will you will find a buyer for your home. Now, this is an example that I'm giving of if you're living in your home and you're putting it on the market. Because during this time, you're, you're living in a home that you don't feel connected to, you know, or maybe you don't want to leave it. And it can be a sad, a sad time. You remember all the good memories, but just keep in mind what your goal is. Your goal is to get it sold. And you're just kind of playing this game of, um, allowing people to view it. And you're just wanting to find the right buyer and, and have your home shine in the, in the brightest light possible. And a side note here, um, if you have pets, would be to have a place for them to go during these times. And you might, you might have a, available showing times when you're at work and you have your animals um, with a friend or a family member. And you don't want any um, new home buyer coming in and maybe being frightened by your animals or vice versa. You don't want your animals to be frightened by these people coming in that they don't know. So kind of keep them in mind also because they are part of the family. Okay, so you have your home priced right. It's been on the market for one week. And with your fingers crossed, you have one offer, two offer, or three offers in your hand. And you're deciding. You are the seller of your home and you also get to pick the buyer for your home. So look at all of the offers in hand. What is going to be beneficial for you? Um, Is it going to be beneficial for which buyer, do you think? And with all of these offers you accept one and this start this starts the negotiation and you are pretty much agreeing to a price and the amount of time it will take to close on your end and for them um depending on if they have to sell their house first before moving in to yours. It could take a little longer if it's contingent on a sale. If, um, or maybe you need, maybe you as the seller need a few more days after the close of escrow to kind of get out. A lot of sellers need that money from the sale to then move and such. So there might be, you know, close of escrow plus three days written into your contract. So you have that extra buffering time of transition because it's not like, let me just snap my fingers, switch the keys over and go. What if you need a little time? And that's kind of what that's for. But also in this final, um, in this first accepted offer are dates for, um, How long does the buyer need to complete their inspections and appraisals? And if you agree to all of this, then you can accept. And you remain flexible during this time. Um, I recommend things happen. Life happens. And um, throughout the process, it's a negotiation on both sides. But as long at the the end of the day, if if it's a win-win, and everyone's treated fairly, then we can get the sale of this house, you know, underway and begin this transfer. Because as you can imagine, it's it's not just like buying a jacket. We're like, oh, if you don't like it, I'll just return it tomorrow and get my money back. So I kind of like that this escrow period is set up in California the way it is just to ensure that everything is, is right on both sides and everyone can do their due diligence and making sure there's no fraud. And you might be wondering, well, how long does it take realtor Trezudo? 
how long does it take to, to list my house and get my money in my hand? Well, we like to say it takes about 60 days. And that's from, you know, putting it on the market, having an open house, waiting for the offers to come in, evaluating the offers, picking an offer. And then from there on out, you're kind of working with one buyer and one seller. And this whole process from beginning to end can take about 60 days. It can be quicker if if everyone's kind of on their their best behavior, I, I want to say, and and does everything they're supposed to do. And but uh, objections come up, and things come up, and and if something happens, and this buyer decides that they do not want the house, and then they back out, and then you are as the seller almost starting your time, not completely over because it's been exposed to the market, but you're at, you're going, you're going to add days to your end close of escrow date and things happen, you know, and no one's perfect. And at the beginning, you're, you're wishing that you can just pick the best offer. That's going to be the most legit. And that's why when you're, you're, you're looking at all the offers in your hand, who do you think is the most serious? Do you have an offer in your hand with a large down payment or good faith deposit? Um, or maybe there's a letter in one of the offers. And a, a previous tip I have um, posted was um, if you're on the buyer side is to add a personal touch to your offer. So if you're putting an offer in and you're like, hey, I want to buy this house for 298000 Um, But I'm also going to type up a little paragraph about my family um, and my motivation for wanting to live in your home, hoping that you pick me. I'm going to put a little picture there uh, just to humanize the transaction. At the end of the day, we are all people. We are all human. And yes, this this is a business transaction. I am in the business of real estate. I'm a realtor. Uh, but at the end of the day, I am a person too. So in a, in my past, uh, I was going to say in my past life, <laughs> that's not true. In my past career choice as a kindergarten teacher, all I did was care about these kindergartners and then also teach them to care for others. So it's only right that in the real estate profession, I'm bringing over this this caring nature of mine because it doesn't matter. We're, we're all people. And if we can just have a conversation and get to know someone, and even if it's through a letter, even if um, I get this offer from Mr. and Mrs. Offer, <laughs> and it has a picture and, you know, their story and why they want to live here, throughout the transaction, I'm more likely to think of them as people um, because it, it gets messy. It gets messy down the line when you go back and forth and let's say they have an inspection done and and they want to take 5,000 off the price and you're offended. As the seller, you are sitting there like, how dare you think that my home is worth 5,000 less just because of the inspection report that came back. And it's it's very personal. (laughs) Don't take it personal. It's very personal. But when you are thinking that, it's Mr. and Mrs. Offer saying this and not just a piece of paper or this other realtor whom you don't know at all. Um, so that that's kind of my two cents on that. And, okay, let's switch gears. And I wanted to talk to you about the real estate commission. So as a realtor in a transaction that has a buyer and a seller and they are each represented by a realtor the norm is six percent the buyer gets three percent the seller excuse me the norm is six percent the buyer's agent gets three percent and the seller's agent also gets three percent and that is the value that that person is bringing to the transaction and as the seller in California, you are responsible for paying both of the real estate agents commissions, the buyers and the, and the sellers. And this comes out of the 
the home sales price. And this is, and I always thought, well, that makes no sense. But if you, if you think about it in terms of at one point or another, you're going to be on one side of this. So if you buy a home, so to get in, to buy a home, I don't have to pay my real, my realtor, my realtor, excuse me, because the seller's agent is going to pay my buyer's agent's commission. So now you're in a home, but you want to sell it. Now you're, it's your turn to pay the commission. And it, it is our job. It is our, the way we eat. It is the way we afford to live. And if I'm doing a good job, I would, I would hope to get my 3% of that deal. And that is my worth. That is my value. And I hope to bring that to, to each and every one of my clients. So that pretty much sums up how to sell your home. And I hope I gave you some tips and some tricks. And everyone's done it, you know, may do it differently. And it may vary from state to state. Um, I'm speaking specifically um, of California. And I'm in Southern California. And if you have any questions um, about what I talked about today, or anything else that I maybe didn't dive into, please, please, please leave a comment on the bottom. Um, You can also leave audio voice messages um, from whatever platform you listen to the podcast on, and um, I'm able to upload them and share them with the audience. So if you have any comments or thoughts, I would love to hear them. Now, I wanted to switch gears and give you a market update. And, um, I am recording this as of January 20th, 2020. So 120, 2020. I thought that was cool. And I like to pull my stats from car.org, C-A-R.org. There's a whole industry 360 forecast section I like to go to. And I will link the website down in the show notes. Um, The first thing I wanted to talk about was unemployment. Unemployment is at its lowest rate in 50 years. So people are working. People um, have the ability to work if they want to. um, Or the option to. Um, the next thing is rates still near historic lows. So if you're wanting to, to start a loan over, what is this? 71? Ooh, 70. Okay. So over the, over the past 50 years, okay. The rates, let's say on this chart for April. 2019, but still we're talking about the current state right now, 3.73%. So as a mortgage loan, that is low, 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 low. And that's why I keep trying to remind home, uh, home owners who already have a loan. Is it a good time to refinance? Is your mortgage rate higher than 3.73%? Um, then this might be a good time. Now, re- refinancing does cost you money. That gets added onto the loan, or maybe you pay out of pocket, depending on the program. So you have to weigh weigh both options. If, if your rate's only going to be lowered a tiny bit, do you want to incur those costs? So... Talk to a mortgage lender. If you need to get in contact with one, please reach out to me. I know a few, depending on your situation, um, to get you in the right hands and to discuss if a refinance is best for you at this time. I just always like to advertise that I can always get you in contact with a mortgage expert. Now, in terms of inventory in California, I'm starting to see less available homes. 
Now, that could be for several several reasons. It could be because we just left the holidays in, in November and December. Or maybe people are not selling their homes or thinking of selling their homes in the middle of the school year or in between these big holidays. So I'm waiting to see if January and February pick up and are we going to see more homes on the market? And I'm just paying attention um, to see if we're going to have this inventory increase or not. Because if, if people are continuing to to buy homes and there's no inventory or not a lot of inventory, then buyers start getting upset because there are multiple offers. And, and the flip side of that is all, if all of these homes come on the market and there are no buyers, that's also negative for the sellers. They're sitting here with these homes and they're like, come on, where are these buyers? So I think we're good. I think we're in a good position right now. I'm just going to wait and see if these homes are going to pop up um, and go from there. I mean, every market is different. We can sit here and try to predict, and um, but nobody really knows, right? So we're just paying attention and just, just look at your situation. Do you want to sell? What is your home worth? Do you know what your home is worth? Um, a good real estate agent can tell you that. And if you were my client, or not even yet, maybe you just want to reach out to me and say, hey, realtor Jessica Trezuto, how much is my home worth? And I'll sit down with you and I'll explain it to you and I'll give you my opinion. And I'll show you what the other homes in your market are doing to tell you what your what your home could possibly do in the market. The market will tell you what your home is worth and you got to pay attention to that or be willing to keep paying your mortgage while you wait for the right buyer to come along. Because for me, I was in a situation where, wow, do I accept this offer or not? And if I do, I only have to pay one more mortgage in a sense, or one and a half more mortgages. If I don't accept it, I could possibly pay three months more mortgage, four months more. Do I want that? What is my goal? So just depending on your situation and your motivation, then that determines your decision making. So in 2018, this says active listings dropped by a double, by double digits. The largest yearly decline in over six and a half years. So 2018, it shows active listings in the high 30 percent, 30 percentile. So 2018, it looks like we had the most houses for sale. Okay, so then 2019, it drops, it drops. And as we get into 2020, that's where I'm like, okay, are you going to go back up or are we kind of staying down here where there's not that many homes listed for sale? So that's what I'm paying attention to and seeing what's going to happen next. Um, Another thing I wanted to talk about was this thing called price per square foot. I don't think this is a magic number that you can just multiply by your square footage of your home and determine your price. Now, some websites out there do that for you. And then, um, I won't mention them, but I think price per square foot varies by region, even in California. So I'm looking at this, um, this, so the California of real estate car.org. I'm on slide number 39 of the 2020 forecast. Okay, it says the price per square foot growth rate remained soft. So in November of 2019, the average for California of all our all our counties and all our cities was $288. So what that means is the average price per square foot 
for the whole state is 288. So for if I were to take this literally and say, okay, $288 pr price per square foot, my home in um, Southern California in the high desert, let's say um, here in Victorville, California, is 1200 square feet so without knowing any better I would take my calculator and multiply 288 dollars times 1200 square feet and that gives me a price of three hundred and forty five thousand six hundred dollars so three four five six zero zero well that's interesting how the numbers lined up in a pattern um three, four, five, six. So if I said, oh, I can get $288 for every square foot of my house. My house is 1200 square feet. I'm going to list my house for $345,600 because I know that's the California average. And I know that's what I can get for my house. Stop right there. The price per square foot is really determined backwards. So once you do your comparative market analysis, once you do your CMA, you look at the other homes in the market, you compare them to each other, you compare it to your home. Where does your home fit in this picture? The current picture that the market is painting, it's already happening. People are already buying and selling. What will your home do in this market? So then I'm going to place my home based on that. So based on my CMA, I'm using my, my, my prior example, my home is about 300,000, but because you want quick offers, you want lots of looks, I'm going to list it for 298,000. So $2,000 less than what I think the market will give me. Okay. So I'm, I'm a little bit lower now again. The 298,000, now you take that number that we've determined the market will allow. Now I'm gonna divide my square footage with that number. Okay, so hold on. Okay, so I took $298,000 and divided it by my 1,200 square feet. That gives me about a price per square foot of $248, about. So I, I can get to this number backwards by, um, by starting with what is the market doing? What are the other homes in the market already doing? Then I can determine my price per square foot. I don't think it's logical to take the price per square foot of the state average. Now you can look at the price per square foot of other homes in your neighborhood in the CMA and kind of look at it like that and say, okay, well, what are people in this neighborhood paying for one square foot? And, but every market is different and I don't want faulty websites to give you these numbers and say, oh yeah, your home will sell for $345,600 and then it doesn't. So just, I want you to have the facts and just kind of have the knowledge yourself and be able to ask these questions because there are so many factors in just even putting together a CMA. I'm looking at what year was it built? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Is there a pool? Is it one story, two story? And I compare it to the other homes that have sold and or are on the market now. And maybe there's homes on the market that are not moving. And I'm going to look at why and then use that to help my client in our situation because, hey, look, this home is just like yours. Would you agree? You know, three bedroom, two bathrooms, same square footage, but maybe the bathroom's on the other side, but more or less it's the same house. And look how many days it's been on the market. The seller and, and their agent put it on the market 75 days ago. 
why do you think that is? And then look at this house that, that was only on the market for 10 days and look at that price. So be honest when you're looking at these comparative market, you know, homes and be real and, and we can have, you know, high hopes and, but at the end of the day, the market is the market. It will tell you what is wanted and what's not wanted and what people are willing to pay and what they're not. So pay attention. So I want to thank everyone for listening to the Real Real Estate Rundown put on by Real Realtors, me, Jessica Trezuto, and I'm here to answer all your real estate questions and to help you figure out what your next step is. That is my job. That is my career. I do this full time and I'm hoping to bring value to you as a listener of my podcast. So thank you and um, shout out to everyone who's following me in my journey Um, I'm speechless. There are so many followers of my podcast and I'm so grateful. Um, even if it's, um, the people near and dear to my heart, it's a start and I cherish each and every one of you. So thank you for listening and let me know your feedback. Um, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, why not? Um, I enjoy criticism, especially if it's honest and it helps me grow. I think that's, um, as humans, that's, that's, that's how we get better. I hope someone tells me what I can work on so I can improve. And, um, I hope you guys all have a great day. Let me know how I can help. Um, and thank you for listening. I will see you next time. Have a good day and hashtag invest in yourself.